Hello guys, good morning. Today in our biology lab, I will just try to show some of the specimens. I mean the slides. Uh, firstly, today we will start with the botany slides. I mean some of the microorganisms or some of the small parts of the plants which cannot be seen with the naked eyes and we can try to see with the help of the microscopes. So when you say microscopes, you have a two microscopes. This is simple microscope, it is dissecting microscope with a single lens for 10x capacity. And here this is a compound microscope with a uh, two or three different type of magnifications. One is 10x, other one is 45x. Okay. But uh, to observe the minute sites, minute organisms or small parts of the plants, we need uh, the compound microscope. Okay, whenever we have a, a little smaller organism or a structure, we can see with the naked eyes, but we cannot see properly. In that case, we can use simple microscope. But uh, when we see the very small objects which we cannot see with the naked eyes, in that case, we need the help of our compound microscope. Okay, today, the help of our uh, compound microscope, I will try to show some of the Slides. That is first we will see what we can see here whole clearly. Uh, the complete box contains uh, many of the slides having the first we will see botany specimens. Okay. Today I will discuss uh, about the details also along with the, the observation under the microscope. I will also show the uh, details of the plan. Okay, fine. We will go to the Microscopes. First, let us focus the meristematic tissue. That is the meristematic tissue of the plant. So, here we can clearly see the hexagonal or rectangular cells with a one peripheral nucleus. With one peripheral nucleus, it is the nucleus is pushed towards the periphery just because the uh, central vacuole okay and in meristematic tissue there is no intercellular spaces so all the cells are uh, compactly arranged so students see properly the structure of a meristematic tissue okay let us go for the next slide that is erenchyma tissue one of the parenchyma tissue that stores the air spaces so here you can clearly see the air gap between the group of cells so erenchyma all of you know that is present in the plants which are growing in water that is aquatic plants especially those plants who undergo who require the property of buoyancy buoyancy means floating on the water surface for example the plant lotus kamala that floats on the water the leaf and flowers float on the water just because the plant has a, the erenchyma tissue in it okay remember erenchyma tissue is a type of parenchyma tissue type of parenchyma that stores the air bubbles or air spaces okay present only in the aquatic plants especially those who need buoyancy that to float on the water surface okay next we will see the cholenchyma tissue so cholenchyma tissue all of you know that it is a living mechanical tissue living mechanical tissue and here the deposition of the lignin is only at the corners or some cells so you can clearly see the depositions of the those biochemicals secondary metabolites lignin and all okay one of the living mechanical tissue it provides mechanical support for the plant and the cells are still living since they contain nucleus hence it is known as a living mechanical tissue okay living because it has nucleus it has all the properties of the cell mechanical means it provides mechanical support for the plant hence it is a living mechanical tissue okay moving on to the next slide that is a sclerenchyma so here you can clearly see the 
more amount of thickenings throughout the cells throughout the plant tissue okay so it's a leaf material where you can see the deposition of the lignin in a more amount hence it is a mechanical tissue but remember it's a dead mechanical tissue it is a dead mechanical tissue just because the cells are dead okay they do not have protoplasm okay the walls are thickened so and the walls have a pits okay that's why it is a dead mechanical tissue one more thing you to remember that uh, the sclerenchyma is of two types sclerites and uh, sclerenchyma fibers okay that's all about sclerenchyma next we'll see the interesting slide one of the interesting slides that is pollen grain germinating on the stigma okay pollen grains germinating on the stigma you can see the pollen grains here okay so let me make it more clear so that you can see clearly you can see clearly the pollen grains when we study the structure of pollen grain we have studied discussed that the pollen grain is covered by two layers one is exine and inthine and exine has a special designs over that exine has a special designs over that so here you can clearly see the exine with a arc architecture on that okay whatever the blue part here that's a stigma whatever the blue part available you can see that it is a stigma of the any one of the plants okay stigma and through that stigma in the style the pollen tube will be formed so you can clearly see the pollen grain and the stigma of uh, the flower okay fine so one more thing uh, during uh, pollination after pollination there are some reactions between pollen grain and the stigma okay if the reactions are compatible then the pollen grain germinates if the reactions are incompatible means negative reactions in such cases the pollen grain do not germinate on the stigma okay let's move on to the next slide here i will take the cycas microsporophyll there is a microsporophyll of the cycas you must remember that whenever we see the use the word micro it refers to male gametophyte male part of the plants reproductive part whenever we refer to mega it is a female reproductive part here it is the microsporophyll of the cycas plant okay one of the microsporangia that produces microspores after a meiosis you can see the microspores the pink structure is wall of microsporangia and in her that the microspores produced later on when the microsporangia uh, dehisces or bursts out then the pollen the pollen grains will release that is a microspores so it is the microsporophyll of cycas plant one of the gymnosperm you remember okay we go to the next plant interesting that is a scalary form spirogyra okay let's see the structure of spirogyra here okay the structure is scalary form means like a ribbon a ribbon shaped so you can see the pigments colored pigments in the plant that's a scalary form spirogyra right moving on to the next slide that is marcantia thallus one of the bryophyte that is marcantia in this slide we will see the thallus of the marcantia wait let me focus properly so that we can see we can study properly yes it is the thallus of the marcantia one of the bryophyte hope you remember the examples of bryophytes rixia marcantia like that so it is the thallus of the marcantia fine moving on to the next slide i am taking the leaf of the nerium there is nerium indicum oleander called by many names so it is the transfer section of the leaf of the nerium this portion is the midrib and the upper epidermis lower epidermis and at the midrib region can clearly see the vascular bundle at the midrib region you can clearly see the vascular bundles and the two phylum uh, sorry phloem on the upper side xylem on the lower side and just below the 
upper epidermis we can see the uh, sclerenic gamma tissue that we call it as a bundle sheet and all okay it is the leaf of nerium i'll just move on to the left side so that you can see that it's a leaf okay one end of the leaf it is the midrib region it is the other end of the leaf that is it is a leaf of the nerium indicum okay fine moving on to the next slide pinus male cone hope you all know that one of the conifer the plant pinus that is male cone that is male reproductive part of the pinus we also call it as a male strobilus so this is the vertical section of a, sorry lateral section of a pinus male cone of course you will learn in the laboratories when you compare pu degree as well as pg but it's a part of learning that it's a pinus male cone so remember it's a uh, microsporophyll microsporophyll male strobilus strobilite whatever that is a, just male reproductive part of the pinus plant okay moving on to the next slide that is a stomata in monocot leaf stomata in monocot leaf let me focus properly you can study the monocot stomata so you can see the stomata here the gourd cells are dumbbell shaped gourd cells are dumbbell shaped okay let me move on to the dicot stomata let me focus the slide properly here you can see the dicot stomata with the kidney shaped gourd cells okay these are the blue colored uh, mesophyll cells and the kidney shaped gourd cells okay that's all about uh, our study of the different plant parts with the help of a microscope okay guys uh, we have got some idea about some of the botanical specimens about the botany some of the plant some of the plant structures like the mesmeric tissue parenchyma collagen sclerenchyma and we also observed about the mesmeric tissue about some of the pollen structure some of the algae some of the thread of rice some of the stimulus stones etc we have discussed in today's observation okay uh, next video we'll try to observe some of the animal specimens till that keep learning okay bye bye thank you